There are some common problems that can occur during placement of a central venous line. Puncture of the adjacent artery is usually obvious if pulsatile or bright red blood flows into the syringe. However, in patients with hypotension, hypoxemia, or both, it may be difficult to differentiate placement in the artery from that in the vein. The possibility of this complication should be recognized before the wire is inserted. If the catheter is in place and its location in the artery is suspected, the line should be connected to a transducing system. Pulsatility or any pressure higher than 30 millimeters of mercury or approximately 30 centimeters of hydrostatic pressure is probably arterial in nature. Ideally, transduction should occur before the wire is passed and should be performed routinely. If arterial puncture occurs, remove the catheter and place firm direct pressure on the site for 10 minutes or until there is no further bleeding. Occasionally, air may be aspirated into the syringe. If this occurs, check the syringe to be sure that the needle or catheter and syringe are firmly attached. If so, immediately remove the needle or catheter since there may be a pneumothorax at that site. This is especially important if the patient is having symptoms of increasing respiratory distress. Immediately obtain a chest x-ray and insert a chest tube if necessary. For persistent bleeding at the catheterization site, apply direct pressure and check the results of coagulation studies. Replace blood products as necessary. If bleeding continues, there may be an arterial or venous tear that requires surgical exploration. In any of these circumstances, do not attempt to place the line at the opposite site since you risk contralateral pneumothorax and further respiratory compromise. If arrhythmias are seen on the monitor, the line may be in the heart, in which case the line will need to be pulled back. By approximating the necessary length of the wire before catheterization and confirming its placement with a chest x-ray, this problem can be avoided. Always be sure to work within a sterile field when placing a central venous line and to keep the site clean after placement to prevent local or systemic infection. If the wire will not thread through the needle, you may need to adjust the placement of the needle since it may have inadvertently been advanced during manipulation. If so, adjust the needle and re-aspirate to be sure that you are still within the vessel. If you are unable to re-establish blood flow, remove the needle and start over. If the vein has been difficult to cannulate, the presence of a clot in the needle will further complicate assessment of whether the vein has been successfully entered. In this circumstance, remove the needle and flush it thoroughly with saline to clear it before reattempting placement of the line. A sterile dressing should be placed on the insertion site. The dressing should be changed daily and whenever blood or liquid accumulates or it loses its seal. In order to minimize the potential for infection in the central venous line, the following precautions should be observed. The number of times the line is accessed should be kept to a minimum. Each time the line is accessed, this should be done under either sterile or clean conditions. The access site should be prepared with an alcohol-based solution. There should be a daily assessment to determine whether the central line is still needed so that it can be removed as soon as it is no longer necessary. A central venous line is a convenient and often necessary tool in the treatment of the critically ill patient. However, one must always be aware of the potential for infection.